in Jeremiah 36. And it came to pass in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, that, his, that this word came unto Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, so you see that, spoken, take thee a roll of a book and write therein all the words that I have spoken unto thee against Israel and against Judah and against all the nations from the day I spake unto thee from the days of Josiah even unto this day. So there we see the word that's delivered to Jeremiah and he's asking him to write it down. It may be that the house of Judah will hear all the evil which I purpose to do unto them, that they may return every man from his evil way, that I may forgive their iniquity and their sin. Then Jeremiah called Baruch the son of Neriah, and Baruch wrote from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the Lord which he had spoken unto him upon a roll of a book. So did Jeremiah write the book of Jeremiah? No, his servant Baruch wrote it from the mouth of Jeremiah. So we see there that the word came from God, it was spoken by Jeremiah, and men penned it down. Does it matter whether Jeremiah penned it down or not? Does it make it any less the word of God? No. Baruch wrote it down, it's still the word of God. Verse 6, Therefore go thou and read in the roll which thou hast written from my mouth, the words of the Lord in the ears of the people in the Lord's house upon the fasting day, and also thou shalt read them in the ears of all Judah that come out of their cities. So that's why, you know, that's one reason why we read the word of God in church, because you know, God wants his word written, read in the house of the Lord. It may be they will present their supplication before the Lord and will return everyone from his evil way. For great is the anger and the fury that the Lord hath pronounced against this people. And Baruch the son of Neriah did according to all that Jeremiah the prophet commanded him, reading in the book, of the, uh, book the words of the Lord in the Lord's house. And it came to pass in the fifth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, in the ninth month, that they proclaimed a fast before the Lord to all the people in Jerusalem and to all the people that came from the cities of Judah unto Jerusalem. And you know, that's what happens in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. When God's word is read, when God's word is preached, when God's word is taught, people will change. People will be moved by the Holy Ghost and their life will change if God's word is being preached. But often when you go to churches on Sunday morning, God's word is not being preached. You know, you, you get up and somebody gets up and tells you, you know, that God loves you and he does, right? And Jesus loves you and gives you a pat on the back, tells you how hard life is, but, you know, God is going to be there for you. And that's what you hear every Sunday. Or you go to church on Sunday morning and you just hear the gospel, the plan of salvation, the plan of salvation, the plan of salvation. How many different analogies of the plan of salvation can be taught on Sundays before you stop growing as a Christian? So that's why at this church, you might be thinking, oh man, he's preaching for a long time and he's preaching all this deep stuff. Well, it's because I want you to be solidified in your faith. I want to preach the word of God because I know that if God's word is preached and taught, hey, you're going to go away strengthened in your faith and there's going to be change there. Um, then read Baruch in the, in, the, in the book, the words of Jeremiah in the house of the Lord in the chamber of Gemariah, the son of Shaphan, the scribe, in the higher court of the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house in the ears of all the people. Um, let's just skip down for sake of time to verse 17. <coughs> it says here, so he's reading, he's going down, he's taking the scroll and he's reading it to all the people. Uh, and then they hear it in the house of the Lord and they say, oh, you know, well, come say it to us. We want to hear all the words too, these servants of the king. And then it says here, and they, and they uh, verse 17, and they asked Baruch saying, Tell us now, how didn't thou write all these words at his mouth? How, where did you get these words? Then Baruch answered them, He pronounced all these words unto me with his mouth, and I wrote them with ink in the book. And you know, that's how simple it is. You know, people try and, you know, we don't want to complicate how we got with God's word. It's like, how did we get it? Well, God gave it to Jeremiah, Jeremiah spoke it, and Baruch wrote it down with ink in a book. Very simple. Uh, verse 23, let's jump down to there. And it came to pass that when Jehudai had read, so Jehudai is a servant of the king. Now he's bringing this book of Jeremiah to the king to read it before the king uh, of Jerusalem. That when Je Jehudai had read three or four leaves, he cut it with the penknife and cast it into the fire that was on the hearth until all the roll was consumed in the, in the fire that was on the hearth. So here we see the original writing of Jeremiah is now thrown into a fire. So do you think God 
is really fast with the originals. He doesn't care, it doesn't matter to him whether the original writings were there or not. And why? Because we see later on in verse 27, then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah after that the king had burned the roll and the words which Baruch, Baruch wrote at the mouth of Jeremiah saying, take thee again another roll and write in it all the former words that were in the first roll which Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, had, hath burned. So God is not, is not fussed with people destroying the originals. Why? Because he's powerful enough to give it again. And, and he can give it again as many times as he needs to to make sure that we have... God's word. And then we read here at the end of the chapter, verse, uh, verse 32. Then took Jeremiah another scroll and gave it to Baruch, the scribe, the son of Neriah, who wrote therein from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the book which Jehoiakim, king of Judah, had burned in the fire. So again, even when the word is penned down again, it's still done the same way. It is Baruch writing down the words of what Jeremiah is speaking from God. And there were added besides unto them many like words and then that's the history of the book of jeremiah the original writings to the king that were burnt then it was done again and more words were added to it so we see there in that story you know how god's word was delivered how god's word is spoken how god's word is written down we saw you know how god's word is spread right because people will take it and preach it um, we see how that the preservation of the originals is a non-issue it's, it's not an issue because God can, can easily give his word again. Uh, we can see that when God's word is preached in the house of God, um, that there are changes that take place in people's lives. And, you know, those that reject the word of God will face judgment. We didn't read those verses because I was planning to read the whole thing. But when uh, the king of Judah, Jehoiakim, threw it in the fire, God is saying, because you've rejected basically the word, God is bringing judgment onto Judah. Um, so... Those that reject the word of God will face judgment. And you have to understand the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. You know, the old covenant, if they rejected God's word, judgment would come on them. How that applies to us in the New Testament is if you reject salvation, you will face God's judgment. But if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you accept him as your savior, you will not face judgment. It's not, we can't misapply these verses and say if it's a believer not living right, that God will bring the judgment, the fire, the wrath, and the cursing on them. Um, that is not part of the New Testament covenant. Uh, 